Welcome to Conversations with Crosswinds Counseling. I'm your host, Curtis Smith. Every week on this podcast, we talk about all things mental health, sometimes stress or anxiety. Perhaps you're burned out. Well, this is the podcast for you. We sit down with the wonderful counselors at Crosswinds Counseling and have a great conversation every week. Let's dive into this week's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with Crosswinds Counseling. I'm your host, Curtis Smith, and joining us today on the podcast, one of the wonderful counselors at Crosswinds Counseling, Stephen Weaver. Stephen, who has been with us before on the podcast, thanks for joining us again. No problem. We are talking about a a topic today that I think everybody cares about, most of us care deeply about, Mm -hmm. it's nutrition. And I think we often think of that as a physical situation, something that impacts our bodies, but... I think it's fair to say that it impacts our mental and emotional health and our our physical is certainly they're all interconnected. So Mm -hmm. it's hard to just separate that out. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the large topic of nutrition and and how it relates to health, what comes to your mind? Well, I always relate to my clients. They come in with different things, anxiety, depression, uh, even things like schizophrenia and stuff like that. And one of the things I assess for overall is I always say, how's your diet? And the standard response is, it's good and bad or not that great, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it's always just people don't really know. I don't think they're conscious of what they're eating. And they're also, I don't think, conscious of how it plays into their mental health and physical health overall. So from a counselor's perspective, how do you see that connection between the physical and the mental and emotional? When someone's nutrition, when someone's diet is not great, Mm -hmm. How does that typically play out? For example, sugar is one of the biggest things out there that people are kind of like demonizing Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff right now. It's also one of the most addictive substances. But what that can do is cause a lot of inflammation in your body. Refined sugars are inflammatory and people experience a lot of pain. But also what happens with rises in inflammation with sugar is rises in things like depression, anxiety. Even things like schizophrenia, it can also exacerbate some autistic stuff. Hmm. They're seeing that this rise in sugar usage, and it's in everything, uh, correlates also with like um, reactive hypoglycemia. And reactive hypoglycemia can present like or exacerbate anxiety, depression, things like that. So there's a huge connection because our bodies are all mental health, physical health, everything. Everything is connected to each other. So what you put in your body goes into your second brain, which is your stomach. And I think about 90% or more of your neurotransmitters up here are made in your stomach. Really? So if you're not putting the greatest things down here, it's not, you know, you see the correlation there. So how, how is it connected? How is it not basically? Sugar is a great example of something that's, that's hard to avoid. Mm -hmm. So you know, we often hear everything in moderation. Mm-hmm. I think moderation is a key thing when, when it comes to our diet. Is that from a, a counseling perspective, is that the right mindset to have? Because it's, it is hard to completely avoid sugar. Mm-hmm. And some of it is actually good for you, especially I think sugars that you can get from fruits and, and natural mm-hmm. sources. It's that refined sugar I think is maybe not as good. But even mm-hmm. even some of that in small doses isn't bad for us, right? Right. I mean, the brain wants glucose, Mm. but also things like cancer want glucose, (laughs) want the sugar and that kind of stuff. So we got to really be careful, right? There's higher higher glycemic stuff. And one of the worst things in terms of glycemic index, I'm going to pull something out of my bag. Yeah, Stephen brought props today for the podcast. Make sure not to show the label, but that's a pop. Yeah. Um, So if you see how much sugar is in in here, I'm going to mask this but uh 69 grams and that's about 138 percent of your daily allowance 138 percent in that one one pop can i see the label and high fructose corn syrup which they put in here they do it because it's it's the most cost effective right it's the cheapest to put into there that's why they do it however it's so bioavailable to your body once you put it in there your body doesn't need to break it down at all such as like a fruit it has to break it down to get to the glucose, basically. With this, it doesn't. It just uptakes it really quick. 
which leads to a lot of issues, right? So yeah, there's different kinds of sugar, such as like your agave syrups, which are a little better, or your honeys, things like that. They're kind of more natural. And then your, your refined stuff, which is the high fructose, which is why people are kind of demonizing it right now. But that definitely affects our mood. Yeah. So you drink one of these, yeah, you might feel good in the moment, but later <laughs> on you're paying for it. Right, because that's uh, essentially a day and a half mm -hmm. worth of sugar in that. Right. And that's a lot of inflammation. <laughs> wow. And inflammation leads to so many different things, such as mental health issues. Yeah. Tell me about that connection. You, you've hinted at it a time or two. Mm -hmm. the, the connection between inflammation and mental health issues. Right. What is that connection for us? I mean, I'm not really a registered dietitian or right. a doctor. I'm, I am a certified nutrition coach, so I can't really attest to that. All I know is kind of the effects that happens with yeah. it. But I do know what we can do to, to kind of ameliorate or get rid of the inflammation, which is definitely getting rid of that in our diet. But also things like nutrients in our, in our body can help with um, the inflammation that occurs. And that's basically like you even see some people's faces. They're like red and they're kind of bloated in some ways. It's just it really just leads to a host of issues in our mm. body to have our bodies kind of having that inflammatory response yeah. against things. It's like, hey, this is an indicator that something's wrong. I don't like what you put in my body. I want you to stop doing it. But we've been taught away from being conscious of that. But what I will say is something like this. I'm going to get back in my bag. Here. Yeah, yeah. This is called curcumin. Okay. I don't Highly, know what that is. This is an extract of turmeric. Turmeric is used in Indian cooking a lot. Yeah. Um, but it is what they found to be anti-inflammatory. So that really can help uh, a lot of people with things like depression, anxiety. They take some uh, curcumin. It is known to be anti-inflammatory, but again, that also connects with hmm. being antidepressive, anti-anxiety, that kind of stuff. So what you put in your body is really important, right? So Absolutely. that infl you want to reduce the inflammatory response as much as you can. And that leads to much better physical health, but much better mental health as well. And that's just one of the things that I recommend they talk to their doctors about or their nutritionist that they kind of yeah. include in their diet. Because I can't make say, hey, you take this, but I give them kind of say, hey, start looking at these things. Yeah. If that makes sense. Well, it, and it certainly uh, makes sense that if you're feeling inflamed if your body is out of whack in any way mm -hmm. that's going to impact your ability to be mentally and mm -hmm. emotionally and spiritually healthy right i right. mean it just it's hard to be operating at, at peak condition mm -hmm. if your body is not good right but there's a host of things that i always bring i have a whole list of things that i send people some of the best ones i've got a whole bunch of yeah, show us the DHA rest of your is a huge one. That's fish oil. Okay. Your brain needs that. That's huge. This is across the board for mental health. This is going to help you in innumerable amount of ways. So DHA, fish oils are one of the best ones. Uh, that is also include EPA. As well as with anxiety, depression, B complex. Hmm. A lot of times homocysteine levels are affected by uh, different things like our stress levels and the things we eat. So a lot of people, this is one that's a suggestion too that people look at is a B complex. So what also this includes is a methylfolate a lot of times in what's called a B complex, which usually is B6 and B12. And the methylfolate is there because of things like folic acid that is introduced into things like enriched buns, enriched flour. So a lot of people see enriched flour, they don't know what, I ask them what's in it, they don't even know. I have no idea what enriched means. And I've seen that term mm -hmm. a thousand times. And what I say is a lot of it, some of it is folic acid, which they put in there to reduce birth defects and like tubular stuff in terms of births, which it really has helped with that. However, a lot of people have a genetic mutation, which they can't really process that. And that can lead to a host of mental issues as well. So what we want to do is kind of ameliorate that as well and help break that down within their body. And that's something like a, a good methylfolate, a good B-complex in terms of that can really help with that. Yeah. So there's a ton of things. But I think the biggest thing for most people in terms of inflammation is getting away from processed foods. Anything that is highly processed or slightly processed is going to lead to some problems mentally, physically within our body. So I think that's one of the biggest things that you, they could just start is just 
move away from the box, the quick stuff, the definitely the fast foods, right. and move towards something that's a whole food. Yeah, good piece of steak is probably one of the best things you can eat <laughs> on the planet. I'm telling you. Uh, I like hearing that. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely one of my favorite foods. Um, what else in your uh, bag of props do you have to share with us? Well, I was just going to say vitamin D is a huge one for me mood. Vitamin D plus K2 is yep. really good. And this one has turmeric extract with it, which helps with the inflammation. Yeah, as well. and we hear that all the time um, with seasonal <clears throat> um, sad, you know, people get um, depressed right. or feel worse when we don't see the sun very often. The sun gives us vitamin D, so that one we're aware of. This is probably one of the biggest ones. It's called magnesium. Okay. That's why I have a, such a big thing of it. I take it every night. It's you? so good for a host of things in your body. Anti-inflammation. It's good for your muscle bone. It's good for kind of like restful sleep and that kind of stuff. A host of things. That's why this one's so important. Hmm. Um, but that's really going to be a good one for mental and physical health, this magnesium stuff. Okay. I also have NAC. I just kind of brought this with me because some, I, I, I say during the summer we drink, you know, like parties and stuff like yeah. that, right? NAC is anti-inflammatory. It does a host of things. But one good thing is after a night of drinking, take this in the morning because it's going to help detoxify. It helps with your liver health, things like that. So that's another one that I recommend people look at, talk to their yeah. doctor about. Um, it's called N-acetylcysteine, basically. Um, and another thing, it's a big bag. <laughs> this bag of props. Last thing large. I would say, in terms of mental health, what I, pe why I show people is what I eat for a snack. Now, we've got a whole host of stuff out there that's not that healthy it's like a lot of sugar if you look at it added right. sugars right um, i could get into fodmaps but i'm not going to but mm -hmm. this is probably one of the best nuts you can eat and it's those are not nuts. it's actually anti-inflammatory now cashews things like that people eat a lot of that is inflammatory ah. because that's not even a nut a cashew is not a nut yeah it's I a lagoon Okay. See, w anyway, what I'm getting we're towards learning is learning a lot today. <laughs> I did not know that. Being more conscious of what we're eating, we are going to have much better physical and mental health, but it takes time because we're so railroaded or we're so like given this view that just put stuff in your body, get rid of the hunger. Yeah. But we really need to slow down and be conscious of it. What the heck am I putting in my body? So what I say is when you line up a bunch of nuts and you have a squirrel pick what they want, you know what they go towards first? They go to the walnuts mm -hmm. first. Is that right? Oh yeah, they know what the they know what there is good for their body. So I'm gonna go with what the squirrels is because I'm not as in tune as they are yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't imagine a squirrel knows everything that you've shared with us here today about nutrition. I I, th I think they know a lot. <laughs> But yeah, those are just some of the, this is such a deep topic with people. And like yeah. I say, I just try to get the, the conversation going. Mm -hmm. So they start thinking, huh, because I did have a, a client recently. This is their staple. And me just suggesting that they might want to get rid of that. Oh, wow. That's work in and of itself. Right. Just kind of getting rid of that. But that, again, is highly inflammatory. When you point out the 138 percent of a daily mm -hmm. serving of sugar, were they shocked to know that or did they say, yeah, I know that, but I just, I love it. I, I don't want to give it up. Well, the thing is I don't hit them with that really quickly. I don't want to like yeah. up and too much. I just want to get that conversation going. So it's a real slight thing. So I didn't say it to this person, but that could be an eventuality. right? Yeah. Uh, I think good advice here is if you're thinking about switching from cashews to walnuts, by all means do that. But before you start taking any supplements or vitamins or magnesium or right. whatever, I think you should probably consult a doctor. Right. Um, certainly do your research. Perhaps talk to a counselor before mm -hmm. you start deciding what your body needs. So right. making healthier choices in, in foods, you should do that today. That, right. That's a thing we should all be doing. Definitely talk to a doctor, registered yeah. dietitian first. But I want to get that conversation going because this comes from my health practitioner mm. most of this stuff and thank god she talked to me about this stuff because it's really helped me mm. and you've seen it help others mm -hmm. Stephen, thanks this yeah, was no uh highly educational very enlightening it's not something i put that much mental energy into all the time so i really appreciate hearing about this stuff hopefully mm -hmm. you did too Stephen. thanks for being with us on the podcast Stephen no is problem. One of the counselors here at Crosswinds Counseling that you can find online where you can schedule with anyone at crosswindscounseling.com.
dot org. So go to the website and check us out and we'll see you next week on the podcast. Thanks for watching Conversations with Crosswinds Counseling today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get more of our podcast. And you can comment in the section below. Perhaps you could share what you'd like us to discuss in future episodes. We've got new episodes coming out every week. So we'll see you next time on Conversations with Crosswinds Counseling.